It's Dabby Divine. Hope your week got off to a good start and your situations are, if not great or pretty good, at least bearable and improving, right? Yes, I have so much more to say on this matter, particularly as regards to Anton Daniels opinion on the matter, mainly because I feel that other perspectives should be shared, uh, countering some of his, not that I 100% disagree with a few of his points. But once we get into this video, you will see where I'm coming from. Please, if you enjoy this video, like the video, subscribe to the content, and hit the notification bell. Let's jump right into it. Can you outgrow your spouse? I don't know why people think that is different in your relationship than it is in everyday life, right? And I say this often at times. I say that the person that you lay next to every day is the most important financial, emotional, and business decision that you'll ever make in your entire life. I mean, it is the determining factor sometimes between whether or not you're going to be rich or poor, whether you're going to have success within you know, your household, your kids, whether you can grow a business, everything, right? And so it's not the house that you buy, it's not the car that you drive, it's not the business that you start. The most important financial decision from a business perspective, that as well as from an emotional, professional, uh, personal, however you want to frame it, is who it is that you lay next to every day, right? And we always talk about how sometimes we need to leave family alone and um, you know, leave your environment and sometimes you need to get a new job and all of that. And so, you know, the same way that I hold people accountable, I'm, I'm objective enough to be able to identify the problem areas and which people need to make adjustments to in order to be successful is the same way that I look at relationships from a man's perspective and instinctively from a woman's perspective. And we'll get into that in a minute from a man's perspective. Being married is business first. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't have love and romance and enjoy the person that you're with and all of that, but you also have to take into consideration the fact that people are not looking at it from a business perspective is one of the reasons why they get washed. It's the reason why you end up in family court. It's the reason why you can't vet effectively. The same way is to determine whether or not you went and got the wrong degree and you're in the wrong field or you got the wrong job and, you know... You, you spending time in the wrong environments and they're not allowing you to grow. I tell y'all, divest yourself against the people that's not adding value into your life. I don't care if it's family. I don't care if it's your mama. I don't care if it's your homies that you grew up with. They will have you broke. They will have you Michael Vicked. They will have you, um, you know, in a bad space in your life. They will have you MC Hammered. And we see it all the time. Okay. I see where he is trying to come from, particularly when he brings up the point of you can outgrow your environment. Let's say the environment in which you were raised in, born in, um, happen to find yourself in in life, but you have achieved outside of that, okay? Or you have progressed outside of that, particularly if it is dangerous, particularly if it's holding you back, if it's negative, or as some people refer to it as dysfunctional, toxic, etc. But we have to consider something. When we're looking or getting into spiritual side of things, okay, particularly marriage, the Bible, God's breathed, inspired word, is a whole other realm. Here's why. If you listen to someone like Anton Daniels' perspective, opinions, ideas, worldview, you're going to realize that he is a human being. He is a man. So you're getting the perspective of a man. What is his ethical foundation? What is his moral foundation? What is he rooted in particularly? You know, does he have um, someone who can lead him spiritually on a path? Does he have a head? 
such as Christ, the ultimate leader, right? Master, Lord. So we have to be careful, in other words, as to who we are um, allowing in our head, gaining um, insight from. There's a scripture in the Bible, actually, let's just get deep into it, that talks about your wife, the woman you choose to marry. Okay? First of all, do not become unequally yoked with someone else. So if you're marrying someone from your past, let's say from high school sweetheart, college sweetheart, all right, or a, a person from your youth, obviously you both were on the same page, perhaps closely yoked at the same at, at that time, right? Engaging in similar behavior, activities, social circle, um, family life, etc. I'm not talking about exceptions. I'm talking about generally speaking. Most people certainly have sexual urges, particularly in their teen years, young adult years, and beyond. But once they start, you have to make a decision. Okay? Are you going to engage in, you know, um, immoral sexual behavior or commit sin or, or you know, become promiscuous? Or are you going to get married? <clears throat> And if you choose marriage, then the woman you choose is the woman you choose in your youth. And the Bible speaks about this. The Bible talks about marrying the woman of your youth. And you'll be somewhat surprised as to how the Bible feels about this. And then we'll connect it to outgrowing your, your mate and your spouse versus outgrowing family, friends, associates, employment, etc., city um, um locations, residents, etc. The Bible book is Proverbs ver, uh, chapter 5 verse 18 through 19. It says, "Let your fountain or wife be blessed." Blessed meaning with the rewards of fidelity. I'm reading the Amplified Bible. And rejoice in the wife of your youth. Let her be as a loving hind and graceful doe. Let her uh, chest area refresh and satisfy you at all times. Be exhilarated and delight in her love. Okay, so it's basically saying that your fountain, all right, where you get refreshed from, when you're feeling famished, or I guess we can see famished in another way. When you're having desire, you're having a need, you need to be quenched, right? You need, your, your fire needs to be put out, let's say, uh, in your youth. Um, <clears throat> meaning, you know, the emotions you have in your youth toward being intimate with somebody, let your fountain, your wife, be blessed. So ha make sure that um, your wife is blessed. Fidelity is actually considered a blessing or a reward in the Bible. So being faithful to the wife of your youth, who is your fountain, rewarding her with fidelity and um, loyalty, being happy, celebrating your wife in your of your youth. It didn't say while you're in your youth, while you're young and struggling. It didn't say that. It says rejoicing in the wife of your youth. So however old you are at this time, you should be rejoicing in the wife of whenever you were young or if you're still young. Let her be as a loving hand and graceful doe. Let her female um, body parts refresh and satisfy you at all times. So you should remain satisfied with the wife of your youth. At all times, that means wherever you are in your marriage is basically what it's saying. At all times, what does at all times mean? Only it doesn't say um, only in your youth. Be satisfied with your wife. It says at all times. All times can also mean all seasons of your life. Always be exhilarated and delight in her love. So always be excited about your marriage. Always be 
at peace and delight and um, content in your marriage. Now, delight being delight is um, more of like a happy contentment. You know, you know, not like a sad contentment or settling. It's not about settling. It says being exhilarated and delighting in her love. That's what it's saying about the wife of your youth. So when Anton Daniels is talking about, oh, you you know, you got to, yes, you can outgrow, you can outgrow your wife. God hates a divorce. So unless there is some good reason you need to file for divorce, you should be doing what Proverbs 5 verse 18 through 19 says about the wife of your youth. That doesn't sound like outgrowing your wife to me. Now stick with me here. Okay, let's talk about this a little deeper. Now the wife in a Proverbs that's discussed in pretty, pretty much the whole chapter of Proverbs 31. All right, talks about a woman who um, cares for her home and has a good reputation. She is enterprising. All right, she... Um, takes care of her family. She's not lazy. She gets up, you know, at dawn. She's compassionate. She cares for most people uh, around her, whether she has um, assistance, right? Whether she has babysitters, whether she has kids, whoever's around her, she assists them in some way and gives what she can, can to them if they're in her care, provides for them. Okay, she's charitable, philanthropic, she has a sense of humor and a positive outlook on life and faithful. She is wise and gives good instruction. Her children respect her. They honor her. They call her blessed. Her husband also gives her praises. The main part about that particular um, chapter, Proverbs 31, is Proverbs 31, verse 30. It says, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is praised. So Proverbs 31, verse 31 actually says, the way someone looks, right, their external beauty, their figure, etc., how they dress, right, whether, you know, they're in heels or name brand or tight clothing or loose, whatever the case is that you're attracted to, um, their personality, their charm, etc. All of that is good, but that's not what matters. It may be attractive, but that's not what should be prominent in your mind. That's not what you should be chasing after. That's not what should be your priority. What should be your priority is how much does she fear the Lord, revere the Lord, respect the Lord, honor the Lord, trust the Lord. How faithful is she when it comes to our service to God? You know, so basically when Anton Daniels is talking about outgrowing a wife, the, out, the wife of your youth is not someone you should be outgrowing particularly if you married the woman God has set for you, particularly if you followed the ordinances of what God said a wife should be. Now, the Proverbs 31 wife, you know, some have very um, different opinions on the interpretation of that particular chapter, but whatever the case is, it's a template for what you can look for, um, what's desired, what's um, exalted in a woman, in a wife who is bearing your children and who you're going to be married to. Okay, there's a, there's another scripture in the Bible that talks about a wife who is mainly or basically um, a housewife or a woman who takes care of the home, the children, rearing them, assisting the husband with rearing them because the Bible speaks of both parents. Um, rearing the children and bringing them up in the ways of the Lord and, you know, caring for the family, keeping things stable together. 
So it's not like, okay, the Proverbs 31 wife is the only way you should be, but it's a magnificent template to strive for, let's just say. But then there are women who may not want to go into business, who may not want to be enterprising in that way, who may, you know, want to have a career or a job or a profession, what makes them content and comfortable. Some women want to stay at home and raise their children, care for their families. The Bible gives different archetypes for the wife of your youth or wife in general, whenever you choose to get married. If you um, choose your wife the ways according to the Lord, it is very unlikely that you would have a marriage that's unsuccessful, turbulent, right? Or worth divorcing. And yes, a wife is considered a man's helper. A wife is considered a man's helper. You can find that Genesis 2.18. That was the uh, original way that God had designed the covenant of marriage. Whether your husband is employed, because as the Bible states that a man who does not work, does not eat. Okay, so your husband is employed or has a business, all right? You are his helper. You are his helpmate. Now, does that mean that you have to be a part of his business? The Bible doesn't necessarily specify how you're going to help your husband. If he wants to have a family and you have his children, then you're helping him grow his lineage up, his offspring up in the ways of the Lord. And he should also participate strongly in that. He should lead that actually. So you can be helping him in that way, helping him live in a clean environment. He can also participate in the cleaning. You can assist him in um Providing healthy meals for your children. Now, when it comes to, you know, being a helpmate or someone there for her husband, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to get on your hands and knees and clean. You both can have house help or a housekeeper. You both can choose to not eat at home or cook at home, or have a chef, let's just say. I don't believe that you have to be in the kitchen. I don't believe that you have to, um, you know, be scrubbing all the time. But if that's how you guys choose to, based on, you know, your finances, um, or what you could what you could accommodate financially in your lifestyles, then it's, you know, however you guys see it. But you can also help in just keeping things organized if you have a husband who works long hours or are extra busy. Let's just say that. So, you know, as a plus for Anton, yes, a wife should be someone who is assisting you to grow. But you are expected to love your wife as you love yourself, as you love your own body. You are expected to lay your life down, actually, for your wife as Christ laid his life down for the body of the church. So it's not just the wife giving, giving, giving. The Bible also speaks about husbands submitting to their wives. <laughs> Some people, you know, like to skip over that particular scripture. Yes, wives submit to your husbands. But right before that, in Ephesians, it talks about husbands and wives submitting to each other. Husbands loving their wives as themselves. Husbands laying their lives down for their wives. But I'm going to get a little bit deeper into that particular scripture when we listen to more of what Anton has to say. Okay, but let's just say, yes, the Lord admonishes that you should leave your parents and cleave to your wife. And now, if you look in the dictionary, the word cleave actually refers to adhering or attaching yourself strongly to something, okay? Or becoming very strongly involved with or emotionally attached to someone. 
So to cleave to your wife, that's a tight bond. That's a very strong bond. Okay, a bond that should be nearly impossible to break. But then Anton is talking about all growing your wife. You have to realize the main issue here is not that Anton is speaking of outgrowing your wife, but the fact that he is not addressing necessarily in a strong way the cheating, that's the issue. Okay, if someone outgrew their wife, it would take a whole lot to outgrow your wife. One, the Bible uh, in Proverbs 5 talks about <laughs> delighting in the wife of your youth, your fountain, blessing her, rewarding her with fidelity. And on top of that, putting your life down for her as Christ laid his life down, loving your wife as you love yourself. Like that takes, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. When you say you want to get married, that is what it, a part of what is expected of you. There's more in the Bible that we're not going to be able to cover in this particular video. So when he compares it to outgrowing, let's say, your parents becoming autonomous, becoming independent from childhood, birth, dependency, infancy into adulthood, your parents are actually preparing you to leave. They're preparing you to get out of their house. They're, they're half the time, mate, perhaps, they're looking forward to you leaving some parents, if not most. A lot of people remain friends with, um, you know, old friends from the neighborhood or whatever. Not everyone is from a bad neighborhood, so not everyone is outgrowing their friends. There are people who are from neighborhoods where they remain friends for life. They actually go into business together. They actually, you know, go to college together or um, continue to work in the same town. And, you know, they're content with their life. Not everyone is where Anton is trying to um, be where he is. He is where he wants to be. And that's fine. That's awesome. But he cannot continue to defend this Der Derek um, Jackson and call it evolving and call it outgrowing when it's just basically Derek Jackson cheated on his wife, found something he feels that's better for suited for him while still married is the issue and left and divorced her. So she was the wife of his youth, quote unquote, these days, or I don't know how, however long the term has been around, starter wife. But that's not what the Bible condones. The Bible is not supporting starter wife. The Bible says, continue to enjoy your wife at all times, which can be interpreted as all seasons of your life. So because Derek Jackson broke his vows, um, fell into temptation, showed his weakness, and his stronghold, okay, perhaps maybe even his addiction because he's being enticed by other women of a certain caliber. That's what Anton Daniels is referring to as outgrowing or evolving. In Ephesians, God word talks about loving your wife and respecting your husband. Now, we don't know what actually went on in that marriage. We don't know if she was respectful. We don't know if he was loving. So the marriage could have been doomed from the start. We don't know. But the biggest issue is the fact that Anton tries to rephrase what Derek Jackson actually has done and minimize it in effect. Let's hear some more. We see these artists, these entertainers, we see people that say, yeah, man, I tried to take the hood with me and they took me down or all this type of, type of stuff. Or when things got right, you were groomed for a reason because you have to continue to refine what it is that you're surrounding yourself with and the same person that you was yesterday as you are today, let alone 10 years from now. They call you a groom for a reason because you have to continue to refine what it is that you're surrounding yourself with and all the people along with you. Now, some people choose not to go that way and they want to grow in a completely different direction. It makes it a little bit more complicated when you have kids, and that's the one caveat. Nobody trips when it's just a relationship, or sometimes they do when it's a celebrity. Nobody really trips when it's just a relationship, but when you got young kids, that's the one thing, because we know that the kids didn't ask to be here. 
and they're largely going to be the biggest ones that are affected by what goes on in a relationship. And so, you know, it's important for men to have big discipline. It's important for men to move a specific type of way because as you grow, as you become more successful, as you get more money, as you get more visibility, there will be things that come in your life that you will have to overcome. But for me in particular, you can't tempt me with something that I'm not interested in because I always pray for character. Now let's bring it back to the original question. Can you outgrow your spouse? Absolutely. People do it every single day and that's why they wind up getting divorced. Some outgrow them, some just get emotional, but we're talking about out, um, outgrowing your spouse. She was still talking about the helmet of righteousness and online, which that is his responsibility and his fault because if she's going to be submissive to him, which I don't know the dynamics of the relationship, if she's going to be submissive to him, then that means that she's also a reflection of him. So then he gets all of the benefits and the accolades that come along with whatever it is that she brings to the table, whatever deals that she uh, she secures. When he goes into a room and there's rooms that you can't get into unless you marry, he gets all of the benefits that come along with it. But at the same time, you can't absolve yourself from getting everything that goes along with it on the other side. And there's so many different ways in which you mine this out. You can say that when uh, women um, instinctively have always looked at business as a relationship, even though they're emotional because they're, uh, they're, they're hypergamous. They look for the best available option and their number one uh, reasoning for getting into a relationship is provision and protection. That's looking, for, looking at it from a business perspective. And so don't get emotional about it. Play the game. And you also have to consider what it is that you're getting yourself into. Me, I have a sense of loyalty. I think that my wife is absolutely awesome. I'm never getting divorced. She's always going to be with me. We have a great, great relationship. Phenomenal kid. Um, everything is awesome. On the flip side, I also make sure that I look at things from a business perspective, which, which allows for me to remove the emotion and continue to tell her the truth. And she tells me the truth, which allows us to continue to grow together. You guys may have to forgive me for this <laughs> opinion, but I feel like hey, listening to De listening to this particular this um Anton Daniels, I feel like his wife is likely a very unique woman. I'm not saying that that's necessarily a positive thing, but I'm just going to leave it right there. Um, yeah, but Anton Daniels, you know, he's talking about men being into business and not being, not, should not be emotional about the whole, you know, marriage deal and people mainly being upset because it's the children who get hurt in the, in the situation. Uh, he did also mention about grooming, why a man is called a groom. I sort of agree with that part. You know, the fact that um, the Bible talks about men shaping or grooming their wives in a, in a spiritual way towards um, the gospel, actually, and not just how they feel or how they want to how they want to live, how they want their wives to be outside of the way Christ set out us to live our lives. So it says, Ephesians 5, 25, it says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church, gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleanse her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body just as Christ does the church. Okay, so it talks about how the man um, assists in bringing the wife into holiness and blamelessness. So the man is supposed to be the leader. Even before you get married, when you're courting each other or dating each other, you're supposed to take the lead, take the initiative. Keep her, you know, blameless, holy, without stain, wrinkle, or blemish. So don't be trying to have her um, commit 
sexual immor immorality with you, be promiscuous with you, all right? Sin against God with you before marriage. Because once you're in the marriage, you got to present her holy and blameless, okay? And spotless. So is this how Danea and her husband had been acting or engaging before the marriage? Were they um, living up to the ordinances of the Lord before marriage because they're already out of sync. Alrighty, they have already derailed. They have already taken a detour once you go away from the way the Lord requires it to be prior to and in the marriage. Let's talk a little bit about how Anton tried to diminish a woman. Talking about, oh, you know, it's not as serious um, if a woman and a man divorces, if no kids are involved, except if they are celebrities. No, God hates divorce. It, it, the Bible doesn't say God hates divorce if there's children involved. If you don't have children, if the woman chooses or the man chooses not to have children together or um, they're in a marriage and they have not had kids yet, or maybe the woman is um, struggling or having challenges with infertility or conceiving, God still hates divorce, whether there's children there or not. So, you know, I don't know why that Anton thinks it's his place to state or minimize how serious a divorce is, whether children are involved or not, whether the people are celebrity or not. <laughs> Like he is, this is why I say, be careful about the opinions you're listening to. Just because the Bible says a woman has to be, um, it was created to be a helper to her husband. It doesn't necessarily mean that, okay, but, but he has a business. So you have to now help him in his business or be his secretary or, you know, deal with him in that way. Now, if that's how he chooses for you to um, assist him. Um, as far as the submission part, you guys have to discuss that, go along with that. Hopefully, when you marry a person, he does not show you a fake persona or a representative, not his true, authentic, transparent self. Pray to the Lord that that's not the person you meet and marry, because then you will be submitting to, it could be a tyrant, a dictator, someone without compassion, without um, conscience basically soulless. That's why it's important to pray, to seek the face of the Lord, <laughs> all right, to get sound counsel from mature, respected, faithful Christian leaders before choosing a mate, court, court in them, introduce them to the right people, spend time with the right people, people who've been married, who've had successful marriages in Christ, be around those people with the person you're considering marrying. There's another Bible verse, Ephesians 4, 2, verse 3. Well, actually 2 through 3 that says, Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. So stay peaceful in your marriage. Humble yourself. Be patient with each other. Bear each other in love. Make every effort to keep the unity. And this is not just talking about the wife or the person who is enduring cheating in a marriage. It's talking about both of them. So does it, it doesn't have to result in cheating. Because oftentimes people cheat because they're like, oh, you know, I don't like this or I don't like that. Most times it's minor things that grow and grow, become bigger than they need to be. Right? So, and then it leads to so many other problems in the marriage, such as cheating in this case that we're talking about, you know, being gentle with each other and making all efforts. God is not saying don't divorce, but he wants you to do things the right way in order to not have to get to that point in order to avoid that situation. Now, did Derek Jackson actually love his wife? 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 5 says, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, 
It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. So basically love is, and I feel like this means all love, not just marital love or eros, you know, romantic love. So it does not dishonor others, such as, let's talk about, in this case, the marriage. It does not, you know, cheat or um, disrespect somebody in your marriage, particularly publicly, that's dishonoring somebody. There's other ways to dishonor people, of course. It's not self-seeking, meaning it's not selfish. <laughs> I mean, the Bible lays it all out here. There's also a scripture talking about how it's actually better to not get married. But if you cannot stay sexually pure, then go and get married. 1 Corinthians 7, 8 and 9, it says, For the unmarried and the widows, it is good for them to stay unmarried, as I do. But if they cannot control themselves, they should get married, for it's better to marry than to burn with passion. It didn't say it's better to cheat or commit adultery than to burn with passion. People who go out and cheat um, and become physically intimate and sexual with someone outside of their marriage, not their spouse. That's not what the Bible is condoning. It didn't. It never said that um, cheat so that you won't burn with passion. It says get married to avoid burning with passion. Now, if your wife is, is doing things that's that's harmful to you, harmful, harmful to the um, children. OK, in some way, and you guys have sought counsel, you've attempted to consult God about the matter on multiple occasions. OK, through different seasons, it's like I said, as long as you're not being harmed in some way, whether emotionally, physically, financially. And that doesn't even necessarily mean you have to get divorced at that moment. Of course, if your life is in danger, if... um your mental health is in danger. If other things that are vital to um, security and sanity are is in danger, yes, leave. But if it's something minor where you're having a dispute, a disagreement on a matter, seeing not having the same perspective, you can separate yourself from the person. Now that's going to definitely bring temptation into the situation as well. So you got to resolve it as soon as possible. And the Bible talks about not separating yourself for extended periods of time. And it can get kind of complicated, but this is why becoming mature in Christian beliefs is important. Because when it gets complicated, you won't be confused. You won't be doubting your faith or doubting God. Don't just start and stop or just keep drinking milk and not eating real food. Real spiritual food, you know, the meat and potatoes of Christianity versus just the milk, then you're always going to be in unbelief, questioning, doubting, not feeling secure, not having a sound foundation in our Savior. Also, 1 Corinthians 7 talks about it is good for a man not to have sex, but because sex is happening, everyone should get married, okay, have a wife, have a husband. It didn't say since it's happening, you know, get a wife and then cheat on her or get a wife and plan to have a mistress or get a wife and continue lusting after other women. It doesn't say that. This is why marriage is so important. So what I really want to get at here is that Anton Daniels is talking about outgrowing your wife. But before you even get a wife, realize that's a big deal. Realize, don't take it frivolously. Realize that it's very important. It matters. The Bible has hundreds of scriptures on marriage and how to approach it before, during, even after, if you do break up, if you do get a divorce. But it is a very vital matter. It's weighty. It's heavy. Don't just go into marriage frivolously because if you do it that way, not the right way, you will tend to outgrow the person because you don't, you did not set plans for your life. For your future. you Okay, if you're young, if both of you are in college, you're both ambitious. So you're, you're sort of on the right track, particularly if you have same similar spiritual belief and practices. If you're both not in college and you just choose to, let's say, um, join the army or just or, or you choose to get a career instead of college, 
or gain employment instead of, let's say, um, furthering your education, then if somebody decides to go into business after that or travel the world after that or um, do, you know, do something else outside of what you had planned, you have to try to work that out together. And if it becomes too burdensome, you've sought counsel, you've sought therapy, you've sought this, you've, you've done, you've tried different avenues to fix it and you've um, endured and your safety is intact and your security is intact, then you may choose to go your separate ways, but realize there's consequences to that. And it's no guarantee that your next marriage or relationship is not going to end up in the same way you will outgrow someone else. Who, Because people also change their mind in the way they're living their lives after age 50. You can be 35, 55. Perhaps, you, let's say you were eating meat before you turned 55 and you became a vegetarian at 55. But your wife or your husband choose to continue to eat meat. Is that outgrowing your spouse? Can you still live with that person? Do you love that person enough that you can stay together or remain in holy matrimony? Like it's different levels to it that we have to consider. It's not just about, oh, well, I met her in college. She's my high school sweetheart and I outgrew her. No, you can outgrow someone later in life if you met them later in life. People change their minds. People do. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to divorce the person. You can comfortably live different lifestyles as long as it's within and under the covering of Christ and you're um, being faithful to the Lord. Then everything else should be should fall into place. First thing, seek God's kingdom. All other things will be added onto you. Okay, including peace, including the desires of your heart that God will give you, including strength and sustenance in your marriage and with each other, including tightening of the bond of your unity or your union. Don't just throw in the towel and give up like Anton and others are just making it all frivolous as if it has no weight, no value. You know, just move on to the next. Start over, get a new one. That's not what marriage is about. So be careful when you get into it. But if you choose not to get married, and you have Christian values, you're going to have to remain abstaining from sexual immorality. So, you know, if you want to choose to live life how you want to live it, according to your own will, you can do that freely. But there's also another way you can choose to do it, which is not the easiest way, which is why the road, I mean, the gate is narrow. (laughs) Okay, Jesus is the way, but the way is narrow because everyone wants to do it their way, which is considered the easiest way, which has the most damaging results that leads to death and destruction but that's what most people choose to do so this is why it's so serious to make the decision to receive the holy spirit and imitate become imitators followers of christ 